Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Med, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In our last video, we went into detail about erysipelas and we discussed how it can be difficult to distinguish between erysipelas and cellulitis clinically, so let's go over some of those similarities and differences. Let's start with an overview of cellulitis. Cellulitis is a bacterial infection involving the deeper dermis and subcutaneous fat. And when we compare cellulitis with erysipelas and impetigo, we can see here that cellulitis is a much deeper infection. And when we contrast these two images of erysipelas and cellulitis, you can see that erysipelas really presents more as this homogeneous red patch with clear demarcation. And if you compare this with this image of cellulitis affecting this person's lower left extremity, you can see that it does look very similar to erysipelas. This is because they both present with erythema, edema, and warmth, and result from bacterial entry through a breach in the skin. They're nearly always unilateral. In fact, if you have bilateral symptoms, you really should consider other causes, and the lower extremities are the most common site of involvement. And in the majority of cases, both can be diagnosed clinically, although sometimes we will obtain wound cultures or blood cultures depending on the patient. Now that we've discussed the similarities, let's look at the differences so that we can better understand how to distinguish between the two. First is location, so erysipelas is really confined to the upper dermis, where cellulitis involves a deeper dermis and subcutaneous fat. And although both of these infections are acute bacterial infections, erysipelas tends to be more acute in onset when compared to cellulitis. And when it comes to appearance, erysipelas tends to have a clearer demarcation and is brighter red in appearance, while cellulitis is usually less red and its borders are not as well defined when compared with erysipelas. And the way that you can think about this is because erysipelas is a more superficial infection, the color is going to be brighter in appearance and the borders are also going to be clearer. But please just keep in mind that if you're preparing for examinations, the task question will have to provide you with enough information to distinguish between cellulitis and erysipelas. And you typically won't need to distinguish between the two on a test question just because they present so similarly. It's really more of understanding which organisms are more likely to cause which infection and then how we treat them as a result. In our last video, we discussed how erysipelas is caused by beta hemolytic strep in the majority of cases. And the same case applies here with cellulitis, except we also need to consider staph aureus, specifically MSSA. And so we'll need to use an anti-staphylococcal penicillin like dicloxacillin here. If there is a penicillin allergy, you can also use cephalosporins like cephalexin and cefadroxyl. Now you might be wondering, when do we need to cover for MRSA? And there are actually a few different situations in which we need to consider this. Generally speaking, MRSA coverage is needed in high-risk patients, so think high-risk here. And this includes a wide variety of situations, but a few examples here are severe presentation, so systemic signs of toxicity, purulence, or pus development, injection drug use, immunocompromised status, residing in a long-term care facility, or hospitalization in the last 12 months. All right, everyone, we hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.